Good morning, everyone. Welcome uh, this morning to our weekly mentoring hour. We'll pray and then we will uh, get into our session for this morning. So I'd like to request um, somebody uh, uh, who's on the call to please go ahead and uh, lead us in prayer. Uh, feel free. Anyone can begin. Okay, um, I'll request uh, Pastor Selena. Pastor Selena, if you could please lead us in prayer, please. Sure, Pastor Nancy, let's pray. Father, yes. we thank you for another new day that you've added into our lives. We thank you for the opportunities where we can learn, learn from your word, learn about life and ministry, Father God. We thank you for this time. We bless this time, God. We pray that you would enrich us, build us, and strengthen us, God. We commit the rest of this time into your hands. We pray that our internet's uh, strength, signal strength will be strong and that many will join and be blessed uh, to this session, Father. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Selena. Um, so last week we began um, talking about a very important subject, uh, a loved subject, as Pastor Roshan put it last week, uh, the subject of leadership. Uh, and we looked at a couple of thoughts there and we said that in leading um, people, especially God's people, uh, it's important to lead with a vision. It's important to lead um, as a servant. Uh, it's important to lead with uh, sacrifice the way Jesus did. Um, it's important to lead as an example and to lead strong. Uh, we also discuss that uh, there are certain abilities that are essential um, as far as, uh, you know, a leader is concerned. And um, we had uh, a very interactive time last week because there were several questions uh, and I'm sure uh, this subject is uh, uh, relevant to uh, ministry and that's why you know there are uh, uh, a good number of questions. So there, there were questions such as uh, you know how do we handle or respond to critical feedback, um, how do we um, expand our abilities to handle challenges. Um, someone asked about um, uh, how a leader can remain in the place of humility. Um, and then there, there was a question about how one can handle rumors, um, uh, how can leaders delegate effectively, uh, when would be the right time to delegate, you know, things like that. So uh, we just felt that uh, uh, it'll be nice to continue on the same subject and to um, keep talking about uh, leading, keep talking about um, the questions you know, that, that we have regarding this subject of leadership. So we're going to leave this time open uh, and uh, anyone who has a question about leadership, let's begin there. Uh, we can uh, continue to uh, talk about this subject. But uh, as we go further into the call, uh, please feel free if you have questions uh, about any other subject pertaining to life, pertaining to ministry, pertaining to current events, maybe, um, you know, uh, please feel free. You can always ask uh, questions. So the time is open now and uh, we will uh, continue our our discussion on the subject of leadership. So if you have any um, uh, questions there, please feel free to post it on the chat or you can also unmute uh, and uh, ask. Okay, Rin, uh, thank you for that question. So we have a question right away. And Rin is asking, how do we know if we are a born leader? Uh, so our faculty uh, is on this call. And uh, anyone can pick up this question and answer, please. How do we know if we are a born leader? Okay, um, I'll go back to uh, Pastor Selena, if that's okay. Pastor Selena, any thoughts on this subject? Uh, thank you for your question, Rin. Uh, I think, uh, you know, just taking on uh, uh, responsibility, uh, you know, uh, the willingness of a person to always take on responsibility, to be in the forefront, uh, uh, to see things uh, that, you know, to get things done or uh, to see things that are done, maybe can, 
you know, just show the person that, you know, they have that leadership abilities or traits in them, or even if they have the skills, the abilities um, uh, for leadership, for leading people to take on responsibility, to do things, to organize things, uh, can also be in one way, you know, to just uh, show that there's some innate traits in them of uh, leadership or, uh, you know, uh, to take on leadership responsibility. I think that is what just comes to my mind. Also, uh, maybe if you know that you have the gifting in that area, God has when he gives us uh, gifts uh, to fulfill a spe specific function, he gives us also the grace uh, that enables us to fulfill that spe uh, the specific calling, the specific gift that he has uh, given to us. So uh, our giftings, our calling can also show us if we have that leadership trait and uh, accompanied with that is uh, the grace that God gives us, the enabling that he gives us um, and also the opportunities that he orchestrates for us uh, to be in uh, uh, positions where we can take on leadership roles and responsibilities can also be something that, you know, uh, God is showing us that he has given us this maybe inborn leadership ability. I hope that helps. <laughs> Over to you, Pastor Dancy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, Rin, I hope uh, that answers your question. Please let us know. Uh, Oh, let's, let's add a few, add yes, a few please, thoughts. Yes. Yeah. So then, um, this whole question of uh, are leaders born or are leaders made, right? So, uh, and there's a lot of lot, lots and lots of studies on that because there's this big debate. You know, is a leader born? Is somebody born a leader, or does somebody become a leader? Uh, the and and you know the general consensus is that the thought that somebody is born a leader is just a myth. It's not a reality. Nobody's born a leader, right? So basically leaders, people become leaders. You grow into being a leader. So nobody's born a leader, but you grow to be a leader. And so leadership is something that is developed. The, the as Pastor Selena was pointing out, there may be certain traits that help somebody become a good leader, right? Uh, and these traits, like, you know, the willingness to take on responsibility, the willingness to, you know, the ability to have vision, uh, the willingness to uh, work with people, all these things are traits. Uh, some people may have a greater predisposition for these traits, but even these traits are developed, right? It's like, you know, I was almost tempted to say, when you asked the question, I was tempted to say, look at your birth certificate. <laughs> There's nothing on anybody's birth certificate that gives any qualities. It only says the date you were born and probably your name, you know. But your birth certificate never determines your destiny, right? Uh, your destiny is determined by what you grow into with the help of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. So to answer your question, nobody's born a leader. We develop the traits, the characteristics. Somebody could have the traits but never become a leader because they don't develop it, they just neglect it. Uh, somebody may not necessarily have a predisposition to these traits, but they acquire it. You know, the ability to organize is an acquired skill. Anybody can learn it if you're willing to learn. Uh, the ability to plan, the ability to work with people, um, the ability to resolve, solve problems, the ability to take risks. All these things are things we can actually acquire if we are willing to do it, right? Some people may have a greater predisposition for them than others. That's, you know, part of their makeup. But nothing stops any person from becoming a leader if they're willing to go through the process. That would be my, you know, my response to it. Uh, let others answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you for uh, adding uh, your thoughts. And Rin says, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, and we're hoping she's got the answer to her question. Uh, we'll move on to the next question here from Daniel Oliver. He says, how to overcome stage fear in leading? How to attain more courage to stand in front of uh, a crowd? Um, so 
yes, maybe I'll just share my thoughts and then uh, the other faculty can come in. Uh, I think uh, the best. This is for you. Maybe you can adjust your mic a bit. Yeah. Uh, just, yes, uh, Pastor. You're, no, you're, you're loud, but okay. there's too much of popping sound. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, Pastor. So I'll just, just check. Uh, yes, please. I'll uh, just uh, try. Nothing to wrong with your mic. It's just the position of your mic. Oh, okay. Uh, is it any better now, Pastor? Is it uh, better? You just have to keep it a little away so that there's no popping sound. Okay, sure, Pastor. I'll try to do that. Uh, yes. Any better now? Yeah. Uh, or I can switch to a different uh, earphone. No, no, it's fine. Just, just, just fine? position. Yeah, just position okay, it down sure. a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yes. So uh, coming back to Daniel's question here, uh, where he's asking about how to overcome stage fear. Uh, I I would say, Daniel, that the best way to overcome fear is to uh, just begin to do it. So as and when opportunities come to put in our best to prepare ourselves and uh, uh, to step in, take take on that challenge and uh, even if we are afraid to just begin to minister in front of people uh, you're specifically asking about stage so uh, standing in front of people talking in front of people uh, i think the more we do it uh, that's how we actually overcome fear um, so i leave it open for others as well if you want to share your experience or your thoughts about overcoming stage fear Okay, um, Pastor Ashish, uh, would you like to share your thoughts? Just to add to what you said, uh, yeah, we just had to keep doing it. You know, I mean, uh, so one is our confidence in God. So uh, a scripture that helps me a lot, and even till today, right? Um, a scripture that helps me sometimes even you know after maybe you know, so many decades of ministry, there may be times when I'm going up on stage and there is that sense of oh god i'm not ready or i'm not sure if i'm you know ready whatever um the scripture that helps me second corinthians 3 5 paul says not that we are sufficient of ourselves uh, as to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god uh, so i like to remind myself and if you know if there are any moments where i feel afraid or i feel i'm you know not up to the task uh, up to whatever that's call for, I remind myself that our sufficiency comes from God. So there is the spiritual side, right? Where we draw strength from God uh, to be confident. There are other scriptures, example, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 26, the Lord shall be your confidence. The Proverbs 1, 26, you know, the, in the Lord, you will have strong confidence. So the Lord is the source of our confidence, right? So that's the spiritual side. Second is just that you just have to get up there and do it. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And the more we do it, the more comfortable we become. Uh, but one very important thing, we should never become overconfident. We should always keep looking at, you know, how could we improve um, uh, how we are ministering to the, to the people. So sometimes I go back and look at my own videos, even now. I go listen to my own sermons to see what can I do better, right? Uh, because sometimes when we are nervous or we are not very confident, you know, we, there are certain path behaviors that we don't actually know, but when we watch ourselves on a video, we say, hey, I'm doing that. And the reason I'm doing that is because actually I'm nervous or I'm not prepared or whatever, right? So it's always good, good to give yourself feedback by you looking at yourself on a video or listening to your own message and saying, hey, I could have said that differently. I could have communicated that a little bit more clearly, right? So three things I'll give us here. One is take stand in on God's word to overcome fear and be confident. Second is just keep on doing it, keep on doing it. And third, always keep learning. Be critical of yourself, not to put yourself down, but to see how you can keep on improving. And as you improve, you know, you gain in confidence. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you uh, for those points. I see that uh, you no know, Daniel says, yeah, uh, he's happy with the answer. Um, 
we've answered his question. Uh, so we will move on to the next question here uh, in our chat. Okay, uh, uh, Lubega has a comment, not a question. Um, this is pertaining to the question which was asked earlier uh, about whether leaders are born. He says, I think leadership is desire, passion, training, and action, not born. And uh, Kennedy asks a question. Uh, he says, how do we handle a pastoral whiplash and still build my personal leadership? Uh, Kennedy, could you please elaborate on this question so we can understand exactly what uh, you know, your, the, the answer that you're looking for, please. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, Kennedy, we can hear you. You know, uh, when it comes to this pastor leadership, there is a tendency of people getting burnouts. Then uh, you get one moment, somebody is giving a good testimony, it's very motivating. Another minute, people are walking out of the church, people are discouraged. So it tends to box somebody or a leader down spiritually. Where you can lose direction, you can actually you can even resign as a pastor. So how do you handle something like that? And yet you still keep your personal integrity and you still keep your personal leadership. Because I believe as a leader you have to lead yourself first so you can lead others. Thank you. Okay. Uh thank you, Kennedy. Um uh, so I just want to understand your question better. Are you saying that, uh, you know, sometimes people uh, respond positively to our leadership and then sometimes uh, they, they seem to be discouraged or it, it, the outcome doesn't seem to be positive? But in the midst of that, how do we uh, continue to lead strong? Uh, is that what you're asking? Yeah, and maintain your personal integrity. Okay, maintaining personal integrity in the midst of uh, uh, these circumstances. So uh, any any thoughts, uh, our faculty? Please feel free to jump in. Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Kennedy. I just think uh, we need to take some time to reflect on uh, the pastoral whiplash you've experienced maybe just identify specific challenges, emotions, and uh, lessons that you can learn from that situation. Maybe also connect with mentors or colleagues or friends uh, who can you know, provide uh, kind of support and guidance. Uh, also, uh, you know, uh, just learn how to, uh, uh, you know, just learn from those experiences, consider those lessons and what you can uh, draw from those uh, pastoral whiplash, what you can uh, learn from those uh, uh, lessons that has uh, taken place, you know, how you can avoid that in your own life. And um, uh, also, you know, kind of um, uh, uh, just, you know, embrace a mindset of uh, learning uh, and avoiding those kind of uh, uh, um, challenges that uh, other pastoral leaders go through and what they have uh, uh, you know what what are some of those uh, challenges they have faced what are some of those uh, mistakes that they have made or we can just kind of learn from their experiences um, and also you know um, uh, just uh, uh, lay down personal values and leadership principles for yourself which uh, you can adhere to, which you can follow uh, from these uh, uh, life examples that you are seeing in others, you know, uh, their experiences. And also, uh, you know, have a leadership style for your own self, you know, where you would uh, want to follow those leadership styles and uh, based on biblical principles. And also that would help you to uh, go through uh, or navigate challenges when you face uh, uh, challenges uh, and you know you can fall back on these uh, principles or these personal uh, you know values or leadership principles that you have set for yourself that you can go back and realign yourself to those values uh, when you uh, are facing your own personal struggles or difficulties 
Uh, I hope that helped. Did that uh, answer the question? Uh, did that help? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. It's giving some good direction. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Selina. I'll just add uh, another thought. So Pastor Selina was uh, speaking along the lines of uh, uh, maintaining one's own personal strength to be anchored in values and principles um, according to God's word, uh, and you know then lead. Uh, when there are these varying opinions uh, from people. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, one scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 18, where, um, you know, uh, Paul, he, he says that it is not uh, one who commends himself who is approved, but uh, the one whom the Lord commends. So uh, while people can have, uh, you know, varying opinions, uh, sometimes they have a good opinion and then sometimes uh, it's not so good. Uh, while it's good, to uh, look at uh, these these um, look at these opinions or feedback objectively, and then if there's uh, something that needs to be worked on, to work on it. I think ultimately um, our approval comes from God, so uh, we we need that perspective. When we have that perspective and we lead with that perspective, I think it's a lot easier for us to. Um, stand our ground, continue to lead with integrity uh, and not be shaken when uh, uh, people's opinions, you know, seem to uh, vary. Uh, I hope that also helps in some way, Kennedy. Uh, just an additional thought that I felt uh, I could add. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, here in the chat, I think uh, Sanjay had a comment about uh, the mic uh, being slightly adjusted. So I hope it's better now, Sanjay. Uh, I've tried to adjust it. OK, wonderful. Uh, moving on to Kennedy's uh, question again. He says, talk about transformational leadership uh, in a modern church setup. Uh, Pastor Ashish, can I pose this uh, question to you, please? Yeah, so, um, sorry. Um, yeah, so when you talk about transformational leadership, what we are really saying is leadership that brings about transformation, or if you want to use a simpler word, that brings about change. So uh, now, you know, depending on the context, the transformation that is expected could be different, right? So in a business setting, if a business is going down, somebody would look for a transformational leader who can come in and transform the situation, bring that business from going down to something that's very successful, prosperous. So that, in a sense, is the definition or the concept of uh, transformational leadership. Somebody's bringing about radical change that perhaps is required, necessary, or maybe is very essential for the future of the organization or uh, the people that you're talking about. So um, in, in uh, so when we look at the Christian church and we talk about church leadership, Christian leadership, uh, transformational leadership is somewhat paradoxical, meaning it almost seems like you have to hold on to two opposites. And what do we mean by that? Transformational leadership in the modern world in the church context is one, we've got to be willing to hold on to godly traditions. So it means I am holding on to something that was given to us in the past, while the situation, the environment is changing. So um, the change I need to bring is to make sure that God's people are firmly rooted in the traditions that have been handed to us, godly traditions. When I say traditions, I'm not meaning, I'm not talking about religious traditions, I'm talking about the truths, uh, the scripture, uh, the, the the work of the Holy Spirit and, and, and the DNA of who we are as God's people, right? So in one sense, that uh, in the church context, transformation leadership is, I'm, I'm willing to make sure that people don't deviate from that and yet at the same time, I've got to be relevant to the people or relevant to the world in which we are. So that's the looking forward part, right? So 
um, a, a leader who can bring about change. What is the change we are bringing in, actually? The change we're bringing in is, one, we need to stay aligned to the truth. So when we see people going away, the church deviating from the truth, the transformation we need to bring is, hey, come back to this. Come back to the anchor. Come back to the plumb line. Come back, steady yourself with godly traditions. So these things we cannot. So that's one side of the transformation, bringing them back to the, the truth. The other side of the transformation is, okay, I'm going to be able to address issues that are relevant today because today's issues uh, take on a diff different shape and form uh, than you know previous decades. The underlying problems may be the same, but how it is being expressed today and the complexity of it is very different. And so transformational leadership in the church context is, a, is, is able to address those issues and take the church forward to becoming the church God wants it to be, which is a, a church of greater glory, a church that is you know, stronger uh, in the word, stronger in the truth and so on. So um, the, the, the dynamic of transform, transformational leadership in the church context, you know, you have to look at it from both sides. One is holding on to the past and yet moving into the future uh, and addressing today's challenges. And so on. Uh, that's in a nutshell, you know, but we can talk a lot about it. Uh, you know, on this whole thing. I hope I hope that um, clarifies and gives some thoughts. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ashish. Uh, Kennedy, uh, we hope this answers your question. Or uh, are there any follow-up questions to what was uh, said just now? Okay. Um, Kennedy, I couldn't hear you yes now we can we can hear you okay i'm saying thank you maybe because of time we just started maybe another day <laughs> okay all right yeah thank you so uh, much. Because, you know, you see, you see the modern church, up, church setups today there's a lot of dynamics there's a lot of changes some are uh, technological some are also a lot of advanced sources of information i think having a transformational leadership Help you, just the you are saying, help you handle other things that are emerging, the challenges that are coming. So, when you partner support servant leadership and personal leadership, it can make you guide well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, we will now move on to uh, Sri Radha's uh, question and then, you know, follow. Uh, uh, follow on to Daniel's question. Kofi, we'll come to you. Uh, I can see your hand raised there. So Sri Radha uh, says, as a leader, when we need to take certain decisions to terminate or dismiss someone in our ministry, we can't sugarcoat, but we need to speak out of love. And if we have a good relationship with the person, how, do we, how can we handle this kind of a situation? Okay, so um, it's a really uh, tough, um, decision that a leader would need, need to uh, make to terminate someone or dismiss someone from the ministry? Um, you know, how do we really handle this? So, uh, Shirada, I'll share some thoughts and then uh, our, our pastors can also join me. Um, as Ephesians 4.15 says, uh, you know, we must uh, speak the truth in love. Uh, we must stand on the side of uh, the truth, uh, but uh, try our best to communicate it in uh, uh, in a in a nice way or in a loving way uh, such that uh, you know hopefully uh, we we can uh, try to to resolve the matter uh, by giving some opportunities and to kind of uh, tell them why uh, whatever is going on is, is uh, not correct and then it might lead up to a termination or a dismissal. So we, we could do it that way. But if it comes to um, ultimately terminating them because the person is not willing to make the change, then I think at some point uh, one as a leader needs to make that uh, choice 
for the good uh, of the the people whom uh, they are serving uh, and for the good of the person also who's being terminated because hopefully uh, this would lead to a, a change in that person's life so um, yes we cannot sugarcoat we've got to speak the truth but we can speak the truth in love now the other uh, aspect there that you're asking if we have a good relationship with the person uh, how can we handle this kind of a situation so when we are leading uh, one important thing to do is yes we love people we care for them we are so concerned uh, for them but then to uh, personally uh, or uh, you know uh, be very emotionally connected uh, to people, um, uh, there's there's a very thin line. Uh, we we must maintain that balance where we are still able to think objectively. So if if our relationship, our good relationship with someone doesn't allow us to think objectively, there's something wrong there. Uh, so uh, to be able to maintain uh, that kind of a relationship, where uh, if if at all we need to make uh, a choice on a strong decision on the side of the truth and you know we we need to address a, 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 a some bad behavior or uh, uh, if we even need to go to the extent of dismissing the person we should be able to do that in an objective way and our good relationship with them should not affect us making that uh, right decision because it's going to affect all the people and we are responsible for the people so uh, those are some of my thoughts um, the other faculty anything that you may want to add to it Okay. Um, thank you, Sridhar. I hope uh, that addresses uh, your question. Please let us know. If you have any follow-up questions, you can ask as well. Okay, we'll um, wait for Sridhar. Yes, she says yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Sridhar. Uh, moving on to Daniel's question here. Uh, he says, how to maintain good friendship with our co-leader in ministry without hating them and growing together? Um, okay, Pastors, any, any thoughts on this? How to maintain good friendship? Um, thank you for your question, uh, uh, Daniel. Um, just like to mention that, you know, when we are in ministry, unity is very, very important. And some of the scripture passages that come to mind is Romans chapter 12, verse 18. It says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace uh, with everyone. Uh, also Colossians 3.15, where it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And uh, Psalm 34.14 says, seek peace and pursue it. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. And uh, 1 Peter 3 verse 11 says we, that we must seek peace and uh, uh, pursue it. And even if you look at uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, the whole concept of unity that, you know, uh, the Godhead desires that we be in unity and oneness, even as, uh, you know, the Godhead, the Trinity are in unity and oneness. So it's very important that, you know, uh, we seek peace at all times. Uh, so it's important uh, when we are having, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe a disagreement with a good friend who is a co-leader in ministry, uh, maybe to just be open in our conversation with them to discuss, uh, to find out why they did or said uh, uh, things in a certain way, because to learn from their perspective to uh, sometimes we can look with our own uh, lenses and uh, misinterpret things or misunderstand things. So it's very important to ask them why, what they're doing, why they're doing things in a certain way, to hear from their perspective. And then maybe if it aligns with the overall vision and the mission and the purpose for which the ministry is, then uh, it's good. We can also realign ourselves or also uh, take on their perspective and learn from them. Maybe if it's not uh, aligning according to the plan, uh, the goal or the vision, then we can just kind of, uh, uh, you know, discuss with them, uh, speak it out with them, but, you know, have a very open conversation uh, without being uh, critical or criticizing, uh, you know, um, 
also uh, it's important that we uh, do that with a sense of respect and kindness um, also it is important that you know uh, we if there is any conflict that arises to address it promptly and in a respective way use uh, constructive communication that's very important words that we use is very very uh, important and again you know we can uh, we can pray about this it's important to pray about uh, the the uh, relationships that we have uh, in ministry with le uh, other leaders uh, just pray ask god's guidance uh, seek the holy spirit's intervention when things are not uh, going um, uh, right also it's important to know that people have their strengths and their weaknesses so maximize on people's strengths and understand their weaknesses and maybe we need to help them uh, in the areas of their weakness uh, again be very constructive in the way we communicate their weaknesses and how we can help them uh, uh, you know in their weakness and uh, also the whole principle uh, you know our fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers so it's very important for us to keep that in uh, mind as well yeah sure. i hope that uh, helped yes thank you pastor selena uh, for those points and uh, daniel uh, we hope that your you've you have an answer to your question. Yes, he says, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to taking Kofi's question. Kofi, you had raised your hands. Uh, could you please unmute and ask your question? Thank you, Pastor Nancy. My question has to do with how to address your leader in case he is on a platform or on a pulpit and he makes a mistake. Assuming he is talking about the disciples and they make mention of Paul. If he is on a platform and makes such a mistake, how should it be corrected? Because if you let it go, it means the congregation are going to assume that Paul is also a disciple. Meanwhile, he is not. So how do you address such a situation if a leader is on a pulpit and they make such a mistake? I hope okay. my question is clear. Yes, uh, uh, I, I think I got your question, Kofi. Kofi, are you asking uh, specifically about this particular mistake or in general, if a leader makes uh, maybe a theologically wrong statement, uh, how do you address if a leader makes a mistake in general from the pulpit? Yeah, it's gen a general, general thing. In general. case he makes a mistake, yeah, general. Okay, how do we go about addressing that? Okay, I'll, I'll leave that uh, op open. Um, okay, maybe Pastor Ashish. Pastor, could you please share your thoughts on that? Um. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think if I understood the question correctly. So if uh, I, I, I guess I'll address it in a general sense. So a leader makes a mistake while he's on the pulpit. And, you know, how does how do those under his leadership address it? Um, I think one, it all depends on the culture of the church and the congregation. If we have if we have a culture where it is okay to give feedback, receive feedback, that's a very healthy culture, uh, and which means that uh, people who are under the leadership of the pastor have the freedom to go to the pastor and say, "Hey, you know, um, you know, maybe two of the uh, let's say the next level of leaders can second level. We would refer to them as second line leaders, like the Timothy you mentioned." Um, who would have the liberty to go and talk to the pastor. And again, uh, you know, how we approach and how we communicate is very important. Rather than saying, you made a mistake, we can put it as a question, you know, ask for clarifications. Make sure we actually heard it right. Make sure we actually understood it right. And then bring up, bring the matter up for discussion. So let's say an example. Let's create an example just for the discuss purpose of discussion. So let's say uh, the senior pastor of a congregation, where there is a healthy culture, where there's a healthy environment of giving and receiving feedback. In that situation, if the senior pastor, you know, uh, the leader, uh, he says something from the pulpit, like example, he says, 
you know, Jesus rose up on the fourth day, not the third day. Right? Just example. Now, let's say there are the associate pastor that said, hey, hey, what did we hear? Did we hear it right? You know, <laughs> then, uh, then they would, you know, uh, say, you know, Pastor Kevin, just come and talk to you. And then, then you sit down and have a conversation, right? Uh, so did you say, you know, you're asking for clarification. You're making sure you heard it right. Did you actually say Jesus rose up on the fourth day? Or did you say Jesus rose up on the third day? Uh, then you say, oh, actually, actually, I was very confused. I was thinking about Lazarus and I was preaching about Jesus. And so I got mixed up and I'm really sorry. I didn't intend to say Jesus rose up on the third, fourth day. I was talking about thinking about Lazarus. I actually said Jesus, you know, I got mixed up in my mind. I'm really sorry. So that's a very healthy environment. Uh, that means there's a culture there where we can ask questions, we can discuss. And so that's so. The answer to your question is, in that kind of an environment, associate pastors can approach the senior pastor, ask for clarification, discuss that, that so-called, that, that mistake that was made from the pulpit, everything is fine. But not every church or not every organization or congregation has that healthy culture. In most cultures, uh, most organizations, and most churches, the environment is very toxic. It's a very unhealthy culture. What is it? What do we mean? It means like, hey, you can never question the leader. Uh, if he says, you know, God is darkness and there is no light in God, that's the way it is. You know, you can't question it. <laughs> but that's a very unhealthy culture, right? Uh, and in that kind of a context, there is no room for discussion. There is no room for asking questions. Um, it is not healthy. And so there you will have to think of other ways that you may have to uh, see if you know uh, can we bring in some other leaders to address the matter and so on so it all depends on the culture it all depends on the environment uh, if it's a very unhealthy culture where the leader can never be questioned or uh, you know whatever the leader says has to be followed then that's when you know we will have to look for other options which is maybe bring somebody whom the leader is accountable to to address that theological digression or things like that but that's how i would uh, look at it I hope that helps. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ashish. Kofi, um, uh, did that answer your question? Okay, yes, he says uh, thank you. Uh, we'll move on. We once again are at the end, uh, almost at the end of our call, and we still have so many questions to go. So we'll just do our best to address all of them. Um, so Kennedy has a question to Pastor Ashish where he is saying, uh, how can I tell uh, if I'm leading well? So are there any pointers, Pastor, uh, that we can look at and say, okay, we're leading well? Um, just quick things. Um, the first measure is uh, the word of God. God's word is our plumb line. Uh, and so as a leader, you know, I need to check myself with the word of God? Am I doing what the Bible is telling me as a leader? You know, am I being a servant leader? Am I setting the example? Am I walking in humility? Is my life right before God? You know, uh, so uh, that's the first plumb line. You know, I, I need to measure my own life in the light of God's word, you know, examine my life in the word, word of God as a leader, in, in, as, in, in my leadership. Uh, am I being just? Am I being fair? Uh, am, you know, am I treating people, everybody, am I treating everyone equally? Am I being impartial? You know, uh, 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 am I keeping my heart free from prejudice? Right? That I'm, uh, I'm not, you know, giving any kind. So these are measures that are given to us in the scripture. And uh, uh, if I'm aligned to that and I'm following what the Bible is teaching me about leadership, uh, I know, you know, we are leading uh, as a leader. I'm leading well. The second, of course, um, is uh, we need to, you know, keep our heart clean before God, uh, which is probably connected to the first thing. Is is, is just before God, um, you know, Father, speak to me. You know, Father, if I'm wrong somewhere, please correct me. I'm listening to you, God. Lord, is my heart clean before God? Before because offenses will always come. You know, there will always be people who say wrong things or do hurtful things or whatever, you know, misunderstandings. But is my heart clean before God? If my heart 
is clean before God. That's the second plumb line. You know, that's a good place to be. That's the place we always want to be. And the third thing uh, I would say is we have to look at the fruit. What is the fruit? If we are able to nurture people up, if we are actually bringing about change in the lives of people, positive change in the lives of people, if people are growing up under our leadership, then we are leading well. Right? Uh, if people are only remaining servants and they never move out of that place of being a servant, then we're not leading well. We've got a lot of servants, but we've never matured them into being sons and daughters and raised them up as leaders. So the third thing is look at the fruit. So if I can look at these three things, how am I measuring myself with the word of God? Is my heart clean before God? Am I bearing the fruit of leadership, which is nurturing other leaders? Then I think uh, we can say we are doing pretty well. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing those pointers. And uh, Kennedy, uh, we hope it addresses your question. Please let us know. Yes, Kennedy says thank you. Uh, we move on to the questions from last week here. Uh, so Jackin had a question where she said, Pastor, as a leader, how much can we be vulnerable to those whom we lead um, on a one-to-one -on, one -one basis when we mentor a person? Is it OK for us to share our learnings and uh, telling them about our mistakes? and what we have learned, how the Lord delivered us in a storm we never expected, how much can we be open to others in these aspects of our life. Um, so Jackin, I'll uh, share some thoughts regarding this. Yes, it is okay to be open to people when we are mentoring them, but uh, we need to uh, be discerning about what is it that we uh, share with them. Yes, there will be times when we when we have to share from our very lives and uh, uh, maybe even the mistakes that we uh, made, but then we'll have to think about, you know, if that's uh, the appropriate timing, that's the appropriate example uh, to share with them, to build them up. Uh, and, you know, if we have that kind of a relationship with the individual that we are mentoring, uh, that, uh, you know, we feel comfortable to share, uh, I think it's okay. But hopefully, uh, you know, we, we have... Uh, we have uh, an understanding uh, or a culture um, of mentoring where things will uh, be kept confidential. But if as a leader, you don't feel confident that the person uh, will use it, you know, in the right way uh, or keep uh, it confidential, then I think it's it's um, it's OK not to share. So it, it's totally our, uh, uh, our uh, discretion and uh, having that discerning attitude when we we actually share with people. Um, so we we'll really need to think about it and then go ahead and share details. I hope uh, that helps, uh, Jackin. Okay, yes, uh, so that's fine with Jackin. We move on to uh, the next two questions here where uh, John Blessy asks, what are some of the steps that we can take to avoid being offended when we receive feedback? And also, what are the steps we can take to deal with people who got offended by us, even if our intentions are not to hurt or offend them? Uh, okay, so uh, Pastor Selina, would there be a brief answer to uh, John Blessy's question? Uh, yes, uh, just from my experience, uh, we need to under, I, I just, when I, uh, you know, receive uh, uh, feedback from people, I just know that I'm not perfect. And, uh, you know, uh, just listening to their feedback will help me to grow and improve uh, myself in my own journey. So, uh, you know, uh, just listen to them without, uh, with, without having, uh, you know, any judgmental thoughts or, uh, you know, with a positive mindset and, uh, you know, just view their feedback as an opportunity for growth rather than uh, criticism. Also, if, you know, listen to understand what they are saying, uh, if they, uh, if uh, things that are not right, they have misjudged you or misunderstood you, you can clarify that, you can leave that aside. 
but you can take on what they're trying to really uh, looking into your life and what they're trying to help you with uh, uh, in your uh, uh, for your personal growth also we need to understand that feedback is about our actions and our behaviors our attitudes it's not a judgment about our worth uh, so it doesn't define our identity or our self-worth so that's very important to keep in uh, mind and also you know uh, seek clarifications if you want to fully understand what they're trying to give you as their uh, feedback and also you can shift from the conversation from their feedback to what is the solutions uh, or what way they can help you uh, with the feedback they have uh, brought to you uh, what you can do with the people who are offended uh, you know just like uh, realize that uh, their feelings empathize with them uh, also get back to them in a casual conversation in a uh, very informal way uh, to clarify what you really meant what you said what they are feeling what they are going through uh, what is their own understanding and maybe you can talk about it uh, in detail with them yeah sure Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Selena and uh, Blessy. We hope it answers your question. Arun, we've run out of time, but uh, we'll uh, make sure that your question is addressed in the next call. Uh, I'll just close with a word of prayer. Let's uh, pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity where we could come together. We could, uh, Lord, um, uh, uh, ask questions and, Lord, learn from your word. We pray, God, that you'll continue to strengthen us, continue to, uh, Lord, help us be rooted and grounded, O oh God, in the truth of your word, uh, Father God, so that, uh, uh, Lord, we will lead uh, according to your own heart. Father, we surrender each one of us into your hands and the day ahead uh, into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you all students for being a part of this call. Thank you faculty for uh, taking the time to address the many questions. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye for now.